All right, guys. Good afternoon and welcome to Miss Walker's Storytime. We are going to continue reading Explore Academy, The New Bella, A Secret. Um, we are on chapter six. We read a couple of chapters last week to get us started. Um, and right now, Cruz and his friends at the Academy are starting their orientation class. Um, and it's kind of a scavenger hunt. Um, to, to find where they're supposed to be and all that kind of stuff. Um, and Cruz has just um, been pulled away from the group um, and had somebody tell him he needs to leave the academy, that they knew his mom and that um, Nubella had his mom killed. So chapter six, Cruz. Cruz stumbled down the corridor towards the library, the words echoing in his head. You, they killed your mother. They will not hesitate to kill you too. His mind was reeling. Could it be true that his mother's death wasn't an accident? And who was N Nubella? Why did they want to kill his mom? And where did Cruz fit into this picture? When he was a little kid, he was a little kid when his mother died. What had scared the man scarred the man started to say nubella won't take a risk that you risk what could a 12 year old possibly do that would be a threat to anybody it made no sense cruz cried, tried to calm himself down as he made his way through the stacks in the library should he tell someone probably but who his aunt was the one person he knew he could trust but if he told her she'd tell his dad and the two of them would ship him home in a heartbeat Threat or no threat. Cruz had no intention of leaving the academy. Lonnie would help him sort through things, but right now, however, he needed to find Dugan and get to Cave. Cruz spotted his classmate standing in the empty standing in the empty classroom. Dugan's hands were stuffed in his pocket and he was scuffing his toe on the carpet in frustration. He looked at Cruz like a kid on a playground who nobody would invite to play. Dugan, come on, he's he tried not to shout. The moment Dugan saw Cruz, he the sneer returned. We're supposed to go to caves, called Cruz. Everyone else is there. Cave. Well, duh. I knew that. Um, I was just doubling back to make sure every they weren't trying to crick a, trick us. Dugan puffed up like a little one of those inflatable holiday decorations. But Cruz knew the truth. Dugan Marsh wasn't really as self-assured as he pretended to be. Sure, Cruz rolled his eyes unseen. Even if Dugan didn't participate, appreciate it, Cruz was glad he'd come back for him. Nearing the nook in the hallway where he'd been grabbed, Cruz took a quick look at the corner of his eye. The nook was empty. There was no sign of the scarred man. Cruz and Dugan rushed down the steps into the basement. Down the corridor, they came to two black doors with a sign above him. Computer animated virtual experience. Cruz waved his gold sesame band in front of the security camera. Several weighty bolts unlatched and the doors parted. The pair stepped into the empty room that was at least the size of a football field, maybe larger. It was difficult to gauge the dimensions because the walls, floors, and ceilings were black. Their classmates were sitting on stools roughly 10 yards ahead. An older woman with white spiked hair stood before them, lit above by a single spotlight. She wore a hunter green blazer with a brown velvet collar, chestnut brown dog furs, and brown leather riding boots. This had to be Dr. Hightower, the Academy president. She caught sight of Cruz and Dugan and motioned them to join the group. It appears we have some latecomers. Her tone indicated she was not pleased with their tardiness. Screws, Cruz scrambled onto the stool Emmett had saved for him. Dugan took the spot next to Cruz, turning on his tablet to take notes. Cruz kept his head low, slowly lifting his eyes, and saw a line of adults standing in the shadows behind Dr. Hightower. Aunt Marcel was at the end with a sapphire blue blazer white scarf looped several times around her neck. Her arms were folded tightly across her chest for, and was frowning in his direction. Oh, no. You are not here because you are smarter or stronger or braver than the others, said Dr. Hightower. You are not here because you have more perseverance, ambition, or potential, her gaze locked onto Cruz. You are not here to prove yourself. A tremor went through him. You are here because the world needs you as much as you need it. The Academy president began to pace slowly. The spotlight traveled with her. As you go through your training, 
it may seem like your instructors are asking a great deal for, from you, perhaps more than you expected to give. We are. We must. The future of this planet is in your hands. You must do better than those who have gone before you. Our job is to guide you, to help you seek the truth and realize your potential. Each class assigned a set of instructors. She held out her arm towards the adult standing behind her. These are yours. They will remain with you throughout your entire education at the Academy. You are privileged to have one of the best faculty ever assembled. You will not meet a more accomplished or dedicated group of experts to in his or her respective fields. Allow me to introduce them. This is Dr. Kelpak Modi, Geography and Astronomy. Dr. Conrad Iskaya, Biology and Oceanography. This Each professor stepped forward as he or she was illuminated by a separate spotlight. Dr. Brett Gabriel, Conservationist and Scientific Innovations. Dr. Cara Benedict, Art and Journalism. Dr. Ro, uh, Dr. Rowan Leonard, Fitness and Survival Training. Dr. Marsal Coronado, Anthropology, Paleontology, and Cryptology. Explorers, this is your faculty. Faculty, these are your explorers. The teachers and students applauded one another. When Cruz caught Aunt Marcel's eyes, the corner of her mouth turned up. Whew, he was forgiven. When everyone quieted, Dr. Hightower looked into the infinite, infinite darkness. So why did we bring you to cave this morning? Were they supposed to venture a guess? Cruz had no idea what they were doing. He didn't want to put his hand up and be wrong, so he kept his head low. Snort. The sound, at the sound, a sa what sounded like a snort, like a cow mooing, Cruz's head spun towards the the obvious culprit, Dugan. He was about to shush him when there was another sort of moo. He knew it had come from his classmate. Cruz glanced. Emerald, he heard the rumbling noise, a distant thunder. Looking ahead, Cruz's jaw dropped open. Were those animals? And were they? They were. A herd of wildebeest were galloping straight towards them. Cruz's chair began to shake. His teeth rattled. The nose was deafening. Cl dust clouding his vision. Cruz started to dive for cover. Emmett caught his arm. It's not rear. Real, he called above the roar of the hooves. Cruz coughed. But the dirt. It's piped in, he pointed to the floor. Look. Wiping his eyes, Cruz saw that Emmert was right. Brown smoke was being blown through vents beneath them. Once he stood his grounds, he realized the roar was coming from speakers above. The stampede was three-dimensional video being projected in front of them. When the scene faded, the dust settled. Only Cruz, Emmett, Zane, and Sadler were still perched on their chairs. The rest of the explorers were clinging to one another, cowering under their stools or glued to the exit doors. Next to Cruz, Dugan was flat on his st stomach, clutching the legs of his chair for life. The cave. It's the next best thing to being there. Him, it sounded like a commercial. No kidding, said Cruz. His heart was still thumping, threatening to burst through his chest. Everyone scrambled back to their seats. Cruz noticed Dr. Hightower trying to hide a grin. He wondered how many classes before them had followed, fallen for the same ploy. So, Joven told you your orientation was easy, did he? Cruz teased Renshaw as he shuffled past. Renshaw was one of those who had made a mad dash for the exit. Renshaw rubbed his sleeve across his mouth. Brothers, you are sitting inside a technological masterpiece, a true wonder of science, Dr. Hightower's voice echoed in the massive chamber. You may have heard about computer animated virtual experience. After all, it's almost important to keep something like this a secret. However, while many people may know of this simulator's existence, there very few know its mysteries, and we intend to keep it that way. The information I am about to share regarding CAVE operates is not to be related to anyone beyond these walls, not your friends back home, not even your family. Cruz and Emmert exchanged grins. The CAVE is a feast for your senses, continued the Academy president. It combines holographic imagery, thermal radiation sensory, Technology, three-dimensional printing, and climate controls. The holographic cherry tree bloom appeared beside her. Much of that you see programmed is computer images, but touch some of those images, she reached to the pink blossom, and heat from your body will react with the image 
to produce a sensation. In other words, you can feel something that does not exist. The explorers gasp. Other objects you will encounter will be solid, she went on to explain. Cruz saw a red flicker. A cardinal landed on Dr. Hightower's shoulder. She held out her finger and the red bird climbed on. This is a robotic creature created with a 3D printer and is outfitted with a computer chip and solar battery. No, hissed Cruz. Yes, gasped Emmett. Dr. Hightower lifted her hand and the blue bird threw towards the laughter. Small solids like this bird can be constructed in a matter of minutes to coincide with your mission or match the choices you make. Put your hand into the outcrop and you may be bitten by a 3D snake. Of course, as you know, none of the animals in this environment will harm you, but things can still pose a danger. She gestured to the floor vents. Aromat uh, osme uh, atmospheric conditions inside the cave are real. In here, you can experience everything from heat exhaustion to frostbite. You can also get injured, so it's important you follow all the instructions. This is not a game. We do this because it's important for you to learn to handle such situations in here so you can confidently do it out there where it's life or death. Is that clear? Everyone nodded. Soon you will board Orion, the flagship of the Academy's fleet, said Dr. Hightower. You will circumvent the globe, weigh anchor at various ports. You will assist with research, exploration, conservation, sustainability efforts, and other projects. Preparation is the key. You must learn proper techniques, safety procedures, and respect for the areas you will be visiting. So... For the next month, your education will include classroom work upstairs and training missions down here. She reached to take a clipboard from Professor Moby. We will be dividing you into four teams of six for your training. Team Magellan, Team Cousteau, Team Galileo, and Team Everhart. Once you, once you have your teams, your teachers will rotate assigning you training missions to compete Complete your coursework. Here you go. Team Magellan is made up of these six explorers. Ali Solomon, Renika Pajim, Zane Patrick, Mateo Modifier, Yavu, Yali Navo, and Teo Sun. Cruz wanted to be in the same team as Emmett, but with the one in four chance of the odds were stacked against him. Team Con Cousteau will be comprised of the following students, said the Academy President. Emmert Liu, Renshaw McGair. Cruz held his breath. Sailor York, Brainis Jehorzen, shoot, he didn't, wasn't going to make it, Kit. And Cruz Coronado, yes. Cruz put his fist out to the side and Emmett bumped it with his own. Getting on the same team as your roommate, spit Dugan out of his mouth. Gee, I wonder how that happened. And Dugan Marsh, said Dr. Hightower. In an instant, Emmert's round glasses went from per buttercup yellow to battleship gray, causing Cruz to stifle a chuckle. Maybe wearing your emotions on your face wasn't a brilliant idea after all. Cruz understood how Emmett felt. Duguid had made it pretty clear he didn't think Cruz belonged here. As a teammate, Dugan wasn't likely to cut him any slack. Cruz would have to stay on his toes. The moment Dr. Hightower finished announcing the teams, all the lights in cave went out. A hush fell over the room. They were in complete darkness, unable to even see an inch in front of their eyes. Cruz clutched his stool so he wouldn't fall. Was it a power outage? Explorers, you are here because you have earned the privilege, Dr. Hightower's voice floated to them. You are top scholars, creative thinkers, and talented individuals. On paper, there can be no debate. You are extraordinary, but... A message began to appear several feet above the stage, glowing leathers, white words hovering in the air with a banner in the breeze. With all cooperation, for all respect, and above all honor. What of your character, asked Dr. Hightower softly. The motto you see above me is the cornerstone on which the Academy was founded in 1888. It is the very foundation of who we are and what we stand for. In fact, you will find these words inscribed in stone not far from where you sit. As you embark together on your journey, as you seek the truth and serve the world, I expect you to hold yourself to the highest standards of integrity, honesty, and compassion, and I am confident you will. They watched the message slowly vanish, like salt dissolving 
in water. By the time the words were gone, Cruz had committed them to memory. Dr. Hightower then announced that there would be a 10-minute break after which everyone would be meet back in the library classroom for their first class at 8 a.m. Intro to conservation with, Dr. with Professor Gabriel. One final thought, she said as the lights came on. For est fortuna avot. It's a Latin phrase. Who can tell me what it means? Emmett raised his hand and when it came and when called on, answered, fortune favors the brave. Correct, Dr. Hightower opened her arms. Now, true seekers, discover, innovate, protect. The world awaits you. Leaping to their feet, the new explorers applauded. No one clapped louder or longer than Cruz. Dr. Hightower was right. Cruz was in charge of his own destiny. No one else. He could seek the truth. He would serve the world, and he would make a difference. Now, all he had to do was stay alive. All right, and that brings us to the end of chapter six. And we will stop right there, guys, because we have been at it for 20 minutes. You guys have been sitting here long and listening really carefully. Um, and um, we will continue tomorrow. <laughs>